Well, I've been around you a lot of years. You have. And I've heard many times you talk about a child's bent. Yeah. And the bents. Yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah. That's, that, that's marked my family. Has it? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Well, I got it from Proverbs 22, 6, the very familiar verse, train up a child in the way he should go. And even when he's old, he won't depart from it. And the common interpretation is we know the way they ought to go. And that means they ought to be in camp, a Christian camp in the summer, a Sunday school class every Sunday. They ought to read their Bible regularly. They ought to memorize these verses. They ought to learn these songs. They ought to obey. They ought to, ought to, ought to. It doesn't mean that at all. And nothing wrong with any of those things. But out of context, they become a list of demands rather than want tos. So I made a deep study of that 22.6 proverb and found that the word way has to do with characteristics. Train up a child, literally, the Hebrew says, according to his or her way. And we need to think about that. Every child, every child has unique characteristics. One is athletic, one is artistic. One is a little messy, the other is a, you know, a neat freak. One is uh, quick to obey, the other is uh, less desiring to be pleasing. Uh, one is complicated. Another is simple. Now, I've broken it down to real simple terms, but the point is we all have a way. I call it a bent. Mm -hmm. It's a God-given, God-shaped characteristic. Um, early on, I would play ball with our oldest son, and he very early in life could catch that ball. Caught that ball. Uh, second son came nine years later. We had two girls in between. And the second one wasn't really all that interested in athletics. Now, here's the difficulty. When my way right. is to play ball, right. and maybe I'm a little frustrated because I was never, you know, drafted <laughs> by some team that could have had my magnificent talent. What a joke. And, and here's a son I have uh, maybe... He could fulfill my dreams. Right. So I'm going to work on this game with him until he catches that ball and it keeps bouncing off his forehead and keeps hitting on his shoulder. He, and he doesn't want to play ball. It's not his bent. Could be the parent's bent. Oh, but, yeah. But not the child's Here again, we all have bents. Now, it goes a little further. It's a long answer, but it ties together. When you are training your child, you need to adapt your training according to the bent. So you have to know what that is. Oh, yeah. You've got to know your child. And that takes time. It takes observation. It takes sensitivity. It takes listening. We're not good at any of this. It doesn't come naturally. And, and we cultivate the ability to watch our children when they're playing, to see their work when they bring it home, to notice how they're doing in school, to pay attention to attitudes and responses, there's a reason they stay turned off, maybe missing it. Well, we've noticed in my house, once we think we've got one of our kids dialed in, uh -huh. they change on they us. They do. They so do. So you can't just do that once. No, 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 you can't. And I, I said it was simple. I've, I've made it sound like, boy, if I learn this, I got a Rubik's Cube and I got red on one side and I got yellow on the other and I got it all figured out. By the time you have it figured out, it's yeah. all jumbled up again because they grow up. And as they grow up, their interests change, not their bents, right. but their interests change. That's good. As a child reaches puberty, he becomes aware of the opposite sex. There's an interest there he didn't even pay attention to when he was eight, seven. Now you've got to figure in, how do I help this child understand herself now that she's reaching the age where boys are attractive? Yep. And let's say her bent is to please. Want to finish that sentence? You gotta, you gotta know that early. Oh man, and and here's a boy that plays up to that, and she's ready to please him no matter what he wants. Oh, that's yep. disaster right there. So she has to understand, and you have to help him know. Right. You know what I notice about you, Carissa? I notice that you have you have real organizational skills. You're really good at putting this together. Now her sister doesn't have the skills that her sister has other skills. Mm -hmm. 
which brings up the absolute anathema of a home, and that's comparison. Yeah. I don't care if they're twins. Right, I was thinking of that. Even twins are oh, different. Oh, look at Jacob and Esau. Yeah. I mean, couldn't have been more different. Uh, and, and, and because that's true, they don't want to be compared. My brother brought home the most boring report cards you could ever look at. I mean, is there any other letter besides an A? Well, as a matter of fact, Dad, I got a whole group of them. You can look at several letters if you want to see. Well, my dad would compare us. And he thought that would help yeah. to shame me because I wasn't making the grades my brother was making. I happen to have a different set of bents. And believe me, I admire my brother for the many things he can do. I can't do as many things. I do a few things well. I do a number of things fairly mm -hmm. well. But he has the same thing. He just happens to have brains in areas that I'm not interested in and good at. That's my bent, and that's his. Doesn't mean one's wrong and one's right. right, right. That's important. Right. It means we, we respect the way God made them. One final thought. When we get a baby in our arms that had come from our loins, that baby comes prescribed by God. Already shaped in many ways. Now, he's not trained. He hasn't learned skills. But he has built in from the start. My mother-in-law used to say that my wife, when she was a little girl and was in a crib, standing in a playpen, and there was music going on, she could tap her fingers to the beat of the music. Never missed a beat as she tapped on the side of the playpen. Guess what? She's musically inclined. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, another kid's over there in the playpen picking his nose. I mean, he doesn't even care that there's music on. Here she is keeping beat with the music. That's, that's interesting. Isn't that fascinating? Yeah. When she's just a toddler. And you could, you could miss that. Oh, yeah. And miss a whole swath of, of a hidden talent. Right. And here's the problem. When you like music and you got a kid that likes music, guess what? Right. Boy, you're ready to take him to lessons. You're ready to pay for what? If he doesn't like me or she doesn't, What's wrong with you? Nothing wrong. She's just not her. Yeah. It's I can't say this enough. I, I can't emphasize this enough. I meet adults all the time who have grown up resenting their sister because they were continually compared yeah. to this incredibly gifted little girl. They had gifts, but they were different. Right. And the parents cultivated the one. Because she happened to have been easier, we say, easier to raise than that one. Often they're easier because they aren't frustrated. Now, not always, but mm -hmm. that's often true.